Folks, since we made our video on Vladimir Tarasenko and his trade with the Florida Panthers, pretty much every GM in the league and their mother was active making huge deals and we need to talk about it. Today, we're going to go through each major trade over the past few days to see which teams won and lost their respective deals. So make sure you watch till the end as we go through every single deal here today and hit that subscribe button if you're new for more hockey trade content just like this. And of course, for the trade deadline stream tomorrow that you won't want to miss. Now, the first deal I wanted to talk about was the one we talked about yesterday, in fact, in the Vladimir Tarasenko deal. And we're going to go over this one quick because we already talked about that in the grades in the last video. But to me, this trade was really interesting with Vladdy going to Florida in exchange to Sens getting a 2024 fourth rounder and a 2025 third. Now, the big thing to note here is the context because Tarasenko had a full no move clause and it seems like he just wanted to go to Florida and really not many other situations. He wanted to be a Florida Panther and it makes sense. They're one of the best teams in the league. Why the heck wouldn't you want to join them? And it seems like Ottawa didn't really have much leverage in that aspect. Seemingly knowing that Tarasenko had his only option as Florida, they were only able to get a couple of mid-rounders. And we know what Tarasenko is able to do, what he's been able to do with the Ottawa Senators this year. 41 points, 57 games. And over the past couple of playoff runs, not bad goal totals, especially at even strength. He's going to be a great addition for Florida. And for the trade grades, I'm going to give the Panthers a straight A and the Ottawa Senators as well a straight C. Now we're going to get into the Noah Hannafin trade in a second. First, I wanted to show you guys my sleeper fantasy picks for tonight. If you don't know, of course, we're partnering with sleeper to give away this Chris Chelios signed jersey. One heck of a deal. And all you guys need to do to enter the giveaway is to sign up to sleeper fantasy. And on your first deposit, use promo code grab. You guys have one day left to enter this contest and you won't want to miss out. Now, as for today's picks for Sleeper, I got five different big ones. On the last one we did, Connor McDavid, we had more than 0.5 assists. That one hit, we're going to go again versus Columbus. I got John Tavares, less than 0.5 assists versus Boston. It's pretty interesting. He has gotten uh, less than 0.5 assists in seven of his last seven games. I also got Andrei Svechkov, more than 0.5 points versus the Montreal Canadiens. He's hit with this six over his last eight and five over his last six versus Montreal. I also got Jacob Chikrin less than 0.5 points versus the LA Kings. He's been kind of cold as of late. He has less than a point in eight of his last nine as well. And then last but not least, William Carlson, less than 0.1 assists versus Vancouver. He's kind of been in a more goal scoring direction this season. He has more goals than he has assists and he has hit less than 0.5 assists in eight over his last 10. This one's going to hit big and we'll get 50 bucks when we get it done. So make sure you go in the description and sign up to Sleeper Fantasy to enter the jersey giveaway, as well as to make your own daily NHL picks to win big money for your hockey knowledge. Thank you so much to Sleeper Fantasy for sponsoring today's video. Now let's move on to the Noah Hannafin deal, one that just kind of didn't really come out of nowhere because we knew he was going to get dealt, but especially to Vegas was an interesting one. We were kind of talking about him maybe going to Tampa Bay, but he lands with the Vegas Gold Knights who have used their LTR space to perfection. And you can see to Vegas, they acquire Noah Hannafin. In exchange, the Flames get Daniil Miramanov, a first round pick and a conditional third round pick. And Philadelphia gets Vegas' 2024 fifth round. Now, looking at what Calgary got here, at least with the picks, both of the first rounder and the third rounder are in 2025, and they both got conditions on it. For that first round pick, it will become a 2026 first if they trade the 2025 first rounder at this year's deadline. So if Vegas goes out and gets a Gensel and they trade the 2025 first, then Calgary will get a 2026 first. And for that third round pick, it will become a second rounder if they win a playoff series this season. So some pretty wonky conditions there, but still the Vegas Golden Knights get themselves a top 4D. I haven't maybe been as high on Hennepin as some others. He puts up some great analytical results, but I think he's more of maybe second or third D at the NHL level rather than this top pair 100% unreal defenseman. But still, you can see over the past few years, he's done very solid being around that 40 point range for the Calgary Flames. He's going to be great as a top 4D for Vegas and exactly what they needed. I mean, we've seen them already go out and get a bunch of different assets. They went after and got Anthony Mantha. Now they get Noah Hannafin. And again, they're using that space controversially, but again, they're free to do so. This is how the NHL works. You can circumvent the cap like Vegas has done and they're doing it pretty well, aren't they? As for the trade grades, this one gets pretty interesting. I think for Vegas, it was a no-brainer move to make, and they did a great job, at least until recently, of stockpiling picks and keeping the chains going. And I think only giving a first round or a second rounder at most is still pretty good value for what Hannafin can bring in Vegas. Still, though, if Calgary does get that first and second, I think it turns out pretty well. But right now, I'm going to give Vegas a straight A. I'm going to give Calgary a B-, and then for Philadelphia, getting a free extra pick, a B-, because... 
them using that free space every team if they have the space to do it should be involved in three team trades to make the salary work get a free pick it, it's a win-win for everyone also, don't count out Daniil Miramanov here, 26-year-old D. He's a guy that could maybe fit into the bottom pair in Calgary's system and could be decent. I don't think he's going to be anything incredible, but if he has a 60, I think he could go worse with the size he brings. And I think for Calgary, could be an underrated addition here. Next up, I wanted to talk about the Alex Wenberg deal. And this is one of the only few ones that's actually worked out for my predictions. I Wenberg going to New York and he lands the New York Rangers. This deal, though, is a little bit more rich than I was expecting. When we were talking about Wenberg before, I thought he maybe could get a third rounder, maybe another mid-round pick on top of that. But it seems like his value was a lot higher. And for the Rangers, it seems like they were pretty desperate to make a move, especially to add on to that three center position, which was a, a position of need for them. They get Wenberg, though, who will be a pretty interesting fit. This year, 25 points in 60 games. It's really weird because I feel like Wenberg has usually been more of this defensive center, but he's had some pretty rough PK results this year as well as on defense, and he's a guy that I'm not really sure what to make of. Still, though, I like the Rangers being active. I think they needed to make a move for a center, and Wenberg was one of the guys they needed to go after. I'm going to give this deal a straight B for the Rangers, but for the Seattle Kraken, a straight A. Considering what they got here, it's exceptional. They get a second round pick this year and a fourth round pick in 2025. And even if it was just a second straight up, I thought that would have been incredible value for the Kraken, but they get another pick on top of that. And it's perfect. Wenberg wasn't going to resign. He wasn't a big part of their future. And it opens up some center space for a player like Shane Wright as well next year. Perfect trade for the Kraken. Now, this one is going to take a long time to dissect. And let's just get right into it. Let's talk about the huge Adam Henrique, Sam Carrick trade to the Edmonton Oilers. This one also kind of came out of nowhere. I was still really thinking that Florida was going to be an interesting fit for Henrique, but after they traded for Tarasenko, that seemed a lot less likely. But Edmonton going after him is quite fascinating, and honestly, I think it is a fantastic fit. Both Henrique and Sam Carrick, I think, are going to be really great depth for this Oilers squad and depth that they need it. As for the trade details themselves, the Oilers will get Adam Henrique, Sam Carrick, goalie Ty Taylor, a 2024 seventh rounder. Tampa Bay receives a fourth round pick in 2025 for retaining salary. And Anaheim receives a 2024 first rounder and a 2025 fifth round. Now, as for the conditions on those couple of picks Edmonton gave away, they're mostly involved if Edmonton wins the Stanley Cup, they'll get upgraded slightly. Pretty standard stuff. But let's look at the players that Edmonton got here in Adam Henrique and Sam Carrick, two guys that I love for Edmonton's roster. First, you got Adam Henrique, who at H34 can still bring it. You can play him at C, you can play him at left wing, wherever you want him. Henrik, Henry can be versatile, and you can see what he's been able to do with Anaheim this year on a poor Anaheim squad, just really the past couple of years, hovering around 30, 40 points. This year, he has been excellent and consistent as well for this Ducks team, and he's going to bring a punch. He's going to bring in some good speed and versatility that really Edmonton needs. I mean, he's a smart player. He's diverse. He can play in both ends, and this is a guy that I think is going to be really solid in that middle six. Again, bring some punch outside of McDavid, Dreisaitl, Hyman that they desperately need, and you also got Sam Carrick, who I think is really underrated in this deal. Analytics don't love him, but whenever I watch him, you can see the intensity. You can see how he's just such a physical presence. And I think as a fourth line center, he's going to be pretty perfect if he slots in that role. You can see this year of Anaheim, eight goals, 11 points, 61 points, or 11 points in 61 games. This is a guy that I think is going to bring, again, another diverse tool set to Edmonton's bottom six, bring them some more stability. And to me, I think he'd be a pretty perfect fourth line center for them. I don't think he's going to light the world on fire, but he's going to be a fan favorite as well as Henrique who are both going to be great in the playoffs too. And a great part of the salary retention is that Edmonton still has $2.1 million in deadline cap to work with. So if they want to go after someone else, they have the opportunity to. As for the trade grades, I'm going to give this deal a B plus for the Edmonton Oilers. For the Ducks, getting a first rounder, another pick on top of that is excellent value. I give them an A plus for that. And for Tampa Bay as well, bringing on the extra pick, you get an A plus Tampa Bay. Congratulations. Now we go on to the pair of Colorado Avalanche deals and wild ones at that. This Bo and Byram and Casey Middlestad trade seemingly came out of nowhere, but also it didn't. I've seen mock trades regarding these two being swapped for each other for months now, and it's one of those few times where mock trades actually become reality. Now, the precursor to this was, of course, the Sean Walker deal, which really set things up, and we're going to get into that in a second, but this deal is insane, and it's incredible in a lot of different ways. To me, with Colorado, it is 
awesome though and if they're able to re-sign Middlestat long term which I suppose they will you'll get a really interesting second line center here I don't know if he's going to be a shutdown guy perhaps but you can have Ross Cole in more of a 3c role which I think is better for him you can have Middlestat in a more offensive position as the second line center and you can see what he's been able to do he was right behind 60 points last season and this point he's on pace for 61 this year for a career high this is going to be someone that brings a great scoring punch to Colorado on offensive second line center they desperately needed behind McKinnon Middlestat is going to be that and he also got Bowen Byram who has dealt with a lot of concussion issues a lot of health issues but I still think has a lot of potential as a great skating puck moving D he looks pretty good for Colorado I would say over the past couple of weeks and you can see this year 20 points in 55 games I think in Buffalo he could be really interesting I think it's crazy already they're they're adding him on top of defense that already has power and Darlene so we'll see how much power play time he ends up getting but still I think if he's healthy this could be a great addition for Buffalo because it really didn't seem like Middlestat was going to stay for two much long if both players are able to stay completely healthy i think this could be a true win-win one for one deal though as of right now i'm kind of skeptical in byram's case if he'll be able to reach that right now i'm going to give colorado a straight a plus and for buffalo i'm going to give them a b plus on top now we go on to the deal that really set up the Byram and Middlestat trade. And this one was incredible looking back because I think having the Middlestat and Byram trade really sets this trade up for Colorado in a lot of ways. Of course, they got Sean Walker and a fifth round pick in 2026. In exchange, the Flyers will get Ryan Johansson, who they put on waivers immediately, and a first round selection in 2025. To me, this last couple of days, these last couple of trades for Colorado are genius. Even when we didn't see the Byron and Middlestat trade, I still thought Walker was an excellent piece for Colorado. We mentioned that in the trade predictions video. Even though I had him going to Detroit, I thought Colorado could be a sneaky pick, and he ends up going there. To me, he's going to be great in that puck movement, speedy style, and he's going to fit right at home. And getting rid of Ryan Johansson, who we've heard has kind of had some locker room issues in Colorado, especially recently, getting rid of him was a no-brainer, and he has just not worked out with Colorado whatsoever this year, which I kind of saw coming. But you were able to get Sean Walker, you're able to upgrade that defense now, and of course, you open up center position for Casey Middlestat, who they bring in. So not only do they get better on defense, they also get better with the four group, and they let go of a player that wasn't working in the locker room. It is a perfect trade. And for the Flyers, too, you get a first round pick. That's exactly what they wanted. And of what Sean Walker can do with the Avs, he has 22 points in 63 games. Those point totals are going to go even higher in that Avs system, and he's going to be incredible there. Out of all the deals we are going to talk about today, this is the only one that is a true, complete win win. And I give both the Avs and the Flyers an A. Now, one of the last trades we're going to talk about here is the Anthony Mantha deal. This one is pretty solid. The Golden Knights acquired Mantha for a 2024 second and a 2026 fourth rounder. Pretty simple, but I like that. Mantha has been really underrated this season for the Washington Capitals and unexpectedly has kind of risen above this season. 20 goals, 34 points in 56 games for the Caps this year. And to me, it was definitely worth a pretty hot penny. Now, I feel like some people were kind of expecting him to get a first rounder somehow, which I didn't quite expect. I think the trade was pretty fair value, honestly. And considering the Caps couldn't really even move him at all a year ago, I think this is pretty successful for Washington. Now, I'm going to give the trade grades here. I think Vegas did still pretty well here. And I think both teams actually get the same grade. An A- minus for both Washington and the Knights. Now, we go on to one of the trades this morning with the Toronto Maple Leafs trading for Yul Edmondson. And this is one that I don't mind, honestly. The Lubushkin one was a little more disconcer uh, concerning to me, considering... When we what we saw in the playoffs was pretty brutal for him but considering what the leafs gave up it's a third rounder it's a fifth rounder it's not that crazy but edmondson over his past couple playoff runs has been pretty good obviously a cup champion but he's a guy that i thought in the playoffs raised his game in a big level and the way he's able to get over around the cross checks the way he's able to get away with those and and the physicality in front of that he's actually pretty incredible at it i don't mind this trade at all for the leafs honestly as for the trade grades talking about edmondson and what we get here with both the Leafs and the Caps. I'm going to give Toronto a B minus and the Caps a straight B. Now, I'm not really sure how many of you guys care about my trade grades for the Anthony Bavillier trade, but the Preds get Bavillier and the Blackhawks get a 2024 fifth round pick. I'm just going to give both teams a C. I don't really care. Now, there's one trade that happened while there was recording right at the buzzer that I wanted to talk about here involving the Habs and the Ducks making prospect deals here with the Montreal Canadiens getting Jacob Perot and the Ducks acquiring Jan Misha. Now, this one is actually quite interesting when we talk about the players themselves. Two guys from the 2020 drafts, only about 20 picks separating themselves. And you can see as well, the age is pretty similar. Uh, Perot having an April birth date and Mishak having a June birth date. 
and of course as well both wingers both forwards so in those respects not a lot separates them but in terms of play style pro is a lot more one note he's a lot more of an offensive player a power play guy and he's done pretty okay for the san diego goals in that role over the past couple of years well Meshack is maybe more of a grinder more of a, a overall balanced player but might not be a player that tops out too much in terms of pure potential i would say perot definitely has the edge but again it just depends on how montreal is able to play him i think in laval though he could do very interesting and hopefully he's able to get some bigger minutes as well i like this trade for both teams but i also like it for montreal too getting some more offense in the system and at the ahl level i'm gonna give montreal a straight b and anaheim a b minus but those are my trade grades for all of the major trades as of late and boy has there been a lot of them and of course tomorrow we're gonna be doing our nhl trade deadline stream hopefully there will be some deals to talk about nhl gms i'm looking at you but thank you guys so much for tuning in and hopefully we'll see you there for that of course of course hit that like button hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell if you haven't already and also comment down below what did you guys think of my grades what did you agree what did you disagree with and how would you grade all of these deals down below let us know all your thoughts and of course share the video with all the hockey fans you guys know online get the trades out to them and click on this card for all my trade content right in one playlist my name is nathan and i hope you have a great hockey day and i will see you in the next one goodbye